to know that the function is convex, the Hessian matrix needs to have what we call positive eigenvalues. Okay, so I know like maybe some of you uh, are not um, familiar with the concept of um, uh, eigenvalue and eigenvector um, matrix decomposition or single value decomposition. Um, SVD, who doesn't know that? Okay, cool. So just you know to give you an overview. So in the uh, in the one dimensional case, um, the second derivative should be positive at that point. That's how we know it's a minimum. But in the n dimensional case, for a multivariate loss function or for um, a, a multivariate function in general L, the Hessian matrix of that function needs to have positive eigenvalues, which means all of them should be positive. So how do we get eigenvalues and eigenvectors. I'm not going to detail that, but I'm going to define an eigenvector and an eigenvalue for you. So you imagine if we have given a, uh, a vector u, uh, and we suppose that u is an eigenvector of a matrix A, then this u vector should satisfy this equality, where A times u is equal to a um, scalar lambda multiplied by u. Very simple, okay? So in this case, lambda is called the eigenvalue and u is called the eigenvector associated with matrix A. Okay, so let's see this simple example. We have, for example, we have a matrix A, so this is our matrix, and we multiply it by u. So when we multiply it, we get this, these, um, this output vector, right? We know this, that the output vector can be decomposed into a scalar number four times the input u vector, okay? So here the uh, u turns out to be um, an eigenvector, and lambda is just the eigenvalue associated with that vector. Very simple. Now let's look at the more interesting case where we have in this example, what do we have? We have our loss function, but our loss function, L of W, is a quadratic function, okay? So it depends on a matrix Q, and uh, it's linear in W uh, right there, but here it's nonlinear, okay? So let's first compute the gradient of this function. So we want to first to solve to find the optimal omega, or W, okay, W star, so that's our optimum uh, point that we're looking uh, uh, for. We need to compute first the uh, gradient, then check if uh, check if after computing the gradient, or maybe first we can compute the um, the Hessian matrix. Okay, the eigenvalues. If it's positive, then we can compute the gradient. We know it's not a maximum; it's a minimum. Okay. So here we're computing the gradient of our um, loss function, and by applying those rules, so I um. You guys don't need to know all those rules by heart. There are many rules of differentiating quadratic forms, multiplications of matrices, and, you know, like vectors. But these are two forms that you need to know, just, you know, for this simple quadratic form. Because we have seen this, this is just a typical, like, it's similar to base classifier, okay? So we're going to keep seeing this over and over again across the lectures. So please keep in mind those rules. So the first one is what we have is the derivation of a vector, um, a tr you know, AT transpose of vector A times X with respect to X. So it gives us um, A. And if we have this um, uh, quadratic form, so the derivation of ATXA with respect to, uh, should be, sorry, with respect to A, yeah, so in this case, with respect to A, it gives us 2XA um, if X is symmetric, okay? Great, so if we apply those rules to here, so we compute the, um, the derivative of this uh, first form with respect to w in this case. So then we, we will find just it's two times, you know, two times uh, qw and this uh, cancels out. And then for the second thing, for the second term, we apply this rule, okay? And we will get just r, okay? So quite simple. Now, what we're looking for is when the gradient is equal to zero along all dimensions. So it means, you know, our QWR is equal to zero, which means our QW 
should be equal to minus r. So this is, you know, the first optimality condition for our quadratic loss function for an arbitrary q. Okay? Now, for the second order, so we have uh, computed the gradient. Now we're going to compute the, ha the Hessian matrix. And in this case, there is a very nice rule, and um, I will include the PDF link uh, of this uh, file. It's called the Matrix Cookbook, and you can find this formula inside this oh, matrix derivation, differentiation, computation uh, book. You don't need to use know everything, but you just need to look for you know if you're if you're what you're deriving blends into a known uh, form. Okay. So in this case, we're deriving again, so we're computing the Hessian. So we're deriving again this, um, performing the second um, derivative of this function right here. So by deriving it we're, and applying this rule, so it's like um, dx by dx, so we get uh, 1 half qt plus q. But in case, so this is what we're getting for the Hessian matrix, it's just, you know, matrix q plus it's transpose, okay? So Q should belong to Rn times N. It's a matrix here, okay? So if Q is symmetric, then you guys know that in that case, what do we have? If the matrix is sym symmetric, if you flip it around, the transpose of Q is same as Q, right? So in this case, we'll have, what do we have here for the Hessian matrix? Oops. So the Hessian matrix in this case will be equal to Q. Okay, cool, great. So now let's look at real world examples how, about, you know, on uh, quadratic functions and how they look like and how do we know that we are on a, we have a minimum or a maximum or a saddle point or maybe something else. So this is our function here. So it's quite simple. So R, a, R is, is, a, is a vector, so it's a two-dimensional fu function. We have two variables, okay? So R is uh, a two-dimensional vector and has zero, so we zeroed R. So, and also D is a scalar, we put it to zero. So if we put these two to zero, okay, we end up having this, okay? And this is exactly what we have right here. So this is our quadratic loss function. And... Uh, the Q in this case, we're going to look at, explore the shape or plot the shape of the function depending on the given Q. So in this case, let's look at the first case, okay? So the first case, we have uh, a symmetric matrix. We compute, um, so we know that already that the Hessian is Q in this case, right? And by computing the eigenvalues, we find that they're po both positive, which means here our function is what? It's convex. So you can see it's very nice convex um, uh, two-dimensional function. Now in the second case we also do the same. So we have the Q and it's different because now we have zero right there. The eigenvalues, they are still positive. Okay? So here we can see that when we plot our function uh, with respect to W1 and W2, it's still convex. It's, you know, curvature looking facing upward, okay? Now, what about this case? So in this case, we have a different Q, 2 minus 2 on the diagonal, and for the eigenvalues, we have one positive and one negative, okay? So in this case, you guys can see that it's not a minimum. What do we have here? Saddle point, because you have a positive curvature right there, but you can also somehow fit, if you look at the other side, a negative one, okay? So that's the saddle point. So you can see when using quadratic forms, depending on the Q that you have, right? When uh, analyzing your Q, if you can find loss functions that can blend into this format, that can be defined as quadratic uh, <coughs> functions, then what you guys need to look for is the Q, okay? So that will tell you, that will let you know, you know, where to find the minimum. So this is a simple case, but usually our functions are very complex, okay? So they don't blend into just linear and nonlinear, like linear and quadratic. They're like, uh, uh, they can be unknown, okay? 
So this is just a summary of all what we have seen up to this point from the beginning of this lecture. So you have all the mathematical formulations. So I'm just going to go over them very quickly. So this is how uh, we formulate supervised uh, lear uh, learning minimization uh, problem. We want to estimate our, our loss function, right? We looked at the first order Taylor approximation, second order, right, L prime. L, um, the second derivative uh, with respect to omega or W, I keep saying that, but during the lecture is so annoying, but it's okay, guys. So whatever, again, saying it, it's the same thing. <laughs> okay, so we looked at the gradient. We looked at also the Hessian matrix, which is symmetric, okay? And uh, we um, also looked at, well, I probably haven't spelled that spelled that out stationary points so you know all points that satisfy gradient equals to zero or first derivative equals to zero we call them stationary points they can be uh, it can be a minimum a maximum or a saddle point okay so and in high dimensional space we're looking not at the just the first derivative but we call it the gradient it's a whole vector and right these are so these col colored uh, rules uh, I took them from the matrix book uh, cookbook I'm going to include the links but these you guys need to kind of memorize them. Like if you want to derive all the math, feel free to have a look at the book. Okay, great. So now 